Okay, welcome back. Now the demo I'm gonna do, I'm calling horizontal circular motion. We're gonna be using this tube right here, and we're gonna take some string, cut the string with a certain length. So I'm gonna cut it of a length that is longer than the tube. String longer than the tube, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this string through the, the cork that I have here. I'm gonna be using this rubber stopper to, to uh, uh, twist the rubber stopper to make it go around in a circle, right? So I'm gonna be exert, I'm gonna be putting this weight, hanging it from the other end of the string, and then I'm gonna use the tube to make the rubber stopper go around in a complete circle. I'm gonna time about 20 revolutions of the circle and measure the period of the motion. Then I'm gonna use this as a way to calculate the, the period of the motion as given by the equations and then compare the two answers. So I'm making the string go this way, then come back down. Okay, so now the string is tied, and then there's a rubber stopper here at the end of the string, right? And then I'm gonna put this 100 gram weight at the opposite end, tie the string to this 100 gram weight. Okay, then I'm gonna put this weight through this tube, like this. Okay, so now I have the string, so basically what's going to happen is the weight is sitting at the bottom, so it looks like this, the tube is like this, right, so the, I could put the weight anywhere that I want, one of the places I'm going to put it is so that the weight is hanging like this, with the bottom of the weight flush with the tube, then you have a string like this, then you have like this, and then this is the rubber stopper. Okay, so then it's gonna be going around. As I get it going, after a while, I'm gonna be just holding the tube. I can't be pressing on the weight, right? So the equations of motion here is, this is the weight mg, this is the tension t. The weight provided by this uh, weight, the, ten the tension provided by this weight is gonna be propagating up and then it's gonna make this rubber stopper go in a circle like this with the tension T. So the equations of motion are what? Tension T is equal to the F centripetal, the force necessary for the rubber stopper to go in a circle that's equal to the centripetal force is provided by the tension in the string, right? And that's equal to the mass of the rubber stopper times velocity squared over the radius. The radius of the circle is gonna be from the center of the tube all the way to the center of the rubber stopper. That's gonna be R. Then I'm gonna rewrite this equation not in terms of the velocity of the rubber stopper, but in terms of the period of the motion. So velocity is equal to distance divided by time. The distance is the circumference of the circle. So that's two pi R, two pi R divided by the time it takes for one revolution, which is known as the period of the motion. The period, we usually write it as capital T like this. So we're gonna put that in there. And then we're gonna also say that the weight is gonna be standing still, it's in equilibrium. So the tension is equal to mg. We'll call this big M, and then we'll call this the mass of the rubber stopper little m, little m. So this is gonna be big mg, that's equal to little m over r, and then the velocity is equal to 2 pi r over the period t, and then quantity squared, all right? So then we're gonna have here big mg is equal to little m over r, 4 pi squared r squared over the period squared, one of the r's cancels. So what is the expected period mg? Okay, so then let me measure the radius. Okay, I'm gonna hold this weight like this. Up there, this, the ruler is starting at the, where the center of the tube is, all the way to all the way to the edge of the, all the way to the center of the. Okay, that looks like it's about ninety centimeters, ninety-one centimeters from the center of the tube to the center of the rubber stopper, ninety-one centimeters. That hanging there is 100 grams, so that the big M is equal to 100 grams. I can keep that in grams because the 
the, this, this big M can be in grams and the little M can be in grams and they can cancel each other. So what do I need to do? I need to measure the mass of the rubber stopper. So let me go ahead and do that. The four pi squared out, so T theoretical is gonna be two pi square root of M R over big M G, right? And then I can put in all the numbers, two pi square root of, the little M is 19.8, the R is equal to 0.91, the big M is equal to 100, and then G is equal to 9.8. So let's put all of this in. 0.269 seconds is the theoretical period. Okay, so this is how I get this thing going. So I first, I first hold this weight here, I pull this here, Okay, I pull this out. I can first hold it when I'm first getting it started. Okay, go like this. So you notice how I'm holding the weight? But once I get it going, I can, I have to then release this. You see? Now, all I need to do is now adjust the speed. Now notice if I go, if I make the speed very fast, you see how this weight goes up? You see how this weight goes up? I'm going too fast now, because the weight went up all the way to here. Where do I want the weight to be? I want the weight to go down here, right? So all I need to do is adjust the speed correctly, right? So adjust it like this. See, I need to slow down, slow down, slow down, but I can't go too slow because now the weight will fall below the uh, tube, right? So I need to adjust it faster, faster, faster. Okay, once I got the right speed, then I can time 20 revolutions. Okay, so let me get my stopwatch. And what, I, what you can do when you're doing this is you can decide on a, you can decide on a, a signpost to tell you that you've gone once around. So I'm gonna make my chalk, I'm gonna make my whiteboard my signpost. Every time I, I go around and it, went, it, it uh, meets the whiteboard, then it, it has gone around once. So I'm gonna measure 20 of those periods. So it's a bit hard to do this by, uh, yourself, but it's pretty, it's uh, still doable. Ready? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay? So, 20 cycles took 18.48 seconds. Okay, uh, I believe I have a mistake here in the calculation. Let's see, 19.8 times 0.91 divided by, and then this is going to be 980, and then square root of that multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi. Yes, there was an error. It was 0 0.85, 0 0.852 seconds. 0.852 seconds. So you see my theoretical period is close to my experimental. I probably did, didn't do it right. I had a reaction time error. So then uh, I would repeat this uh, multiple times and I would get a result. So you can see here, my percent error is pretty decent considering I was by myself. My percent error will be, okay. So then uh, you could do this in your lab, in your uh, physics classes do different weights, change the weights here. Change, you can change even the mass of the, the rubber stopper and also change the distance. So let's just say I use, instead of 100 grams, instead of using 100 grams here, now I'm gonna add 20 more, so it's gonna be 120 grams. So I'm gonna hang another weight here at the bottom, 20 extra grams. So uh, all I have to do to do that is just hang this from here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay? So now it took sixteen point four eight seconds. Sixteen point four eight seconds for twenty cycles. So what did I do? I changed the how much weight I had in, uh, I had here, right? What, what is that gonna do? That increases the tension, 
which increases this tension, which makes the mass go around faster, right? If it goes around faster, the period should be shorter, right? So then this one becomes 120, right? And the theoretical period does become shorter. That means the mass goes uh, quicker, right? So that's the mechanics of this. By adding more weight, you're increasing tension in the string and you're enabling the rubber stopper to go around faster in the circle. Getting an experimental period that is a little bit larger. So maybe it has to do with my reaction time when I start the stopwatch, when I end the stopwatch, but I'm still getting pretty close, right? So then my error is gonna be 0.824 make the distance larger or make the distance smaller, right? So if I make the distance smaller, what's going to happen? Okay? If I make the distance smaller, that's going to speed up the object too. Why? Because if it's smaller, it should go around faster, right? If it's going around faster, it's going to take it less time to go around because the, the circumference is less, right? So let's make the distance a bit smaller. So then I'm going to measure my new distance between the center of the tube and the center of the rubber stopper. Okay. Forty centimeters. Forty centimeters is my new distance. Okay. So this one went down to forty. There now I'm going back to using the hundred gram weight. Right? So then my theoretical period should drop way down. It should take it much less time to go around. Holds now. Get the distance, uh, get the rubber stopper rotating. This one's gonna be even tougher, okay? So I have to control the pace. Ready. Ready, set, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, okay? So I tried my best to do the, uh, the measurements there. I used the board as my reference point. So 20 took 11.45 seconds, 11.45 seconds. Now I'm gonna divide 11.45 divided by 20. That comes out 0.573. 0.573 seconds per cycle. I'm actually amazed at myself, okay? The theoretical and the experimental match even closer than the other ones, right? Point for error. So the one that I was scared of the most, it's gonna be the most error, actually did the best. So you can do a really good experiment in the class now. Change the distances, vary the distances, right? Uh, vary the weights that you put here, even vary the mass of the rubber stopper and experiment with this and see if they are coming out. You can even do a plot of the theoretical period versus the mass, right? You can do all kinds of as detail-oriented as you would like. If you want to do a plot method, you can do the theoretical period, do a, a plot of theoretical period versus the mass of the, versus the mass of the, uh, what you are hanging, right? Or do a plot of the theoretical period versus the radius, right? So what should it look like? Well, the, the theoretical period should be square root of r, right? If you keep everything else the same, it should be proportional to square root of r. So it should look like this kind of function. Like a square root function. And see if you get a square root relationship, right? What should the theoretical period versus the big M look like? It's one over square root of M, right? One over square root of M would look something like this. Right? So you can do all kinds of uh, interesting plots. Change the big M one at a time, one at a time. Calculate the, the experimental period, right? You would plot the experimental period versus the mass and you would plot the experimental period, right, versus the R, and see if you get the square root relationship. So make the lab as detail-oriented as you would like, and you just by simply using the tube, some string, a rubber stopper, and different weights, and a stopwatch, you can do a lot of good physics behind that, okay? Thank you very much.